I worked with Mike Newell, the, the yeah. British director once on uh, the Guernsey literary blah, blah, blah movie. And he would say literally before every take, he would he would say, and remember, Mikhail, never before. As in like, this is the first time you're entering this room or you mm. you have never seen this. You don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> and I would say that and take five, six, ten, whatever. And, and I loved it. It just kind of gave, gave me the feeling like I was still allowed to explore. Welcome to the SAG After Foundations Conversations at Home program. I'm Janelle Riley from Variety. And now it is my pleasure to introduce the stars of Echo 3, Luke Evans, Mikhail Hausman, and Jessica Ann Collins. Thank you all so much for being here. Thanks, Janelle. Nice to meet you. Um, generally, when we start these, because this is an audience of your fellow SAG after actors, I like to start by asking, how did you get your SAG card? Um, but I know <laughs> you all probably didn't begin in America. So the, the answer, you know, if, if you don't know, you're forgiven. Um, but if you do know, please let us know. <laughs> I, re I, I remember it was a very proud moment for me um, because uh, I, I did start my career back in the Netherlands and uh, only moved to the States about 14 years ago. And I started working on Treme, which was the first thing I did here in the States uh, for HBO. And I, I, if I remember it correctly, it took about like one episode and then I was eligible or something like that. Um, yeah, ever since I'm a really, really proud SAG member. Nice. I, yeah, I remember. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, I remember mine too. Um, I was doing off-Broadway plays in New York after school. And I, you know, had big dreams that I would get to do television or film, but didn't quite understand how it could or would ever happen. And then I, I ended up getting um, a part on a show called The Ghost Whisperer. And I didn't just play one character. I played twins. So I got paid twice. So which was like super exciting. I like got my SAG card. I made double salary and I was just like, I'm made. Like I'm a, I'm a woman. Um, that was like validated. I got mine um, doing the only uh, gory blood psychopath movie I've ever done, which was <laughs> No One Lives, which is this quite terrible uh, film where I literally kill everybody. He is like this. There's no spoiler alert. It's just everyone dies. Um, except me. Um, and I, yeah. And I hadn't realized at the time, but uh, that's what I, that was when I got my, my, my SAG membership from that film. And then um, while I was there, I got the Hobbit. So it sort of worked out perfect timing, actually. <laughs> nice. I, I've never heard before that if you play twins, you get paid twice. That's amazing. Yeah. Or at least that's that, those were the rules back in 2006 or whenever it was. Yeah. Makes I, sense. I, I played twins. I got played twice. They were two separate characters. So that makes sense, actually, now that you say it. But wow, that's so cool. Well, again, congratulations on Echo 3. Um, this comes to us from Mark Bowl. Uh, and I know it's inspired um, loosely by the award winning Israeli series When Heroes Fly. Um, I'm curious how the project found its way to you and what attracted you to your roles. Um, Jessica, I, I know you worked with Mark before on Zero Dark Thirty. Had you been hoping to collaborate again? Of course. And um, one of our other producers, uh, Jason Horowitz, actually created a show I was in called Rubicon for AMC. And I loved working for him very much. So, you know, my name came up um, from both of their minds, which was super flattering. But I had to go through the audition process and um, put myself on tape like I always did. And um miraculously it feels like sometimes or not i don't know it worked out and um yeah so that's that's how my role came about a, a great audition mm -hmm. was this in the midst of the pandemic were you did you have to shoot your own audition and everything of course but that's that's sort of i think what we do now right as actors um which is sometimes very difficult because you have to find a scene partner and then you have to do a setup and um but this is what we do now so yeah you yes. 
sort of taping somewhere in your house with a very generous and kind friend. (laughs) (laughs) Was your friend also an actor by any chance? No. Oh, wow. Okay. He he was a D1 athlete. So I got a lot of like coaching advice (laughs) um, for sports. (laughs) which I was like, this is very refreshing, you know? <laughs> Luke, what about yeah. for you? Uh, you you um, a driven character mentally and physically. What, what interested you, but also maybe intimidated you about the part? Well, I mean, <clears throat> part of the challenge and the, the excitement of doing something that spans 10 episodes, you know, full hour episodes means you can really, you know, dig very, very deep, very deep and, you know, exist in a character for a very long time. And <clears throat> that brings a lot of different kinds of disciplines. Um, <clears throat> you don't want to feel like you're playing the same character for the whole period, you know, the whole 10 episodes. And so you look for a storyline that's going to tr- really, you know, push your character and h- their trajectory in, in, in interesting ways throughout the, the whole season. And the script, even though I only got to read the first three or four they were they were just great, and I could see this character building, and I could see where he would go, and um, lots of play, places he did go. I wasn't expecting, but that was part of the fun and the excitement of you know developing a character over such a long period. And obviously, I got to meet Mark Mark Bowl, the showrunner and writer, um, while I was on a, on a movie. So I got to speak to him for a very very long meeting. It was like very in-depth, very sort of be warned, this is not going to be easy. This is not going to be a difficult show where you're going to be broken many times and all of that stuff, which I was like, great, bring it on. I mean, I, I, I wanted to get my, I wanted to get dirty. I wanted to get roughed up. I wanted to feel that, that, that person's pain. And, 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 and I certainly felt it. Yeah. If you're fortunate enough to have a meeting like that where you, I I don't want to say you're auditioning the showrunner, but you know, you're having a conversation. Are there questions, specific questions you think you should ask, or are you just trying to get a feel for the person? Well, you know, I'm, 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 I'm a big fan of Mark and his work and he's, um, He's, he's an interesting person. He's, he's, he's very, quite difficult to read, Mark. You have to really get to know him and understand him to, to, to understand how his brain works. And even then, you know, there, there are times when you're like, what's he thinking? So when I, I chatted to him for this first time and it was just him and I on, on, a, on a call, um, we, I got to really, you know, study him, study how he, he, how he likes to impart the information that he, he or, or think, and he thinks very much about what you say. So then you think about what you're saying before you say it, because you know, he's going to, he's going to stop and he's going to think about it because his, his, his replies are very well thought out. And um, they often present many more questions, but that's, that was wonderful. You know, you, he's, he's, a, he's a very clever human being. And I, I, I liked that. I liked the I liked what I, what I was seeing and how I felt in his company and good because he was with us, the whole journey, the whole nine months or whatever it was, you know, through Atlanta to Colombia to New Mexico. So, um, yeah, that meant a lot. And Mikhail, um, I recently read an interview where you said you kind of had to fight a little bit for this role. Oh, I don't believe anything you read about me. <laughs> I say something good now. Um, yeah, of course. Yes, I did. Um, by the time I auditioned, like, like Jesse, um, I knew Luke was already attached. Um, I had read the script and I was super excited and I felt like this could be a great opportunity for me to show something that I haven't been able to show uh, so far. Um, And, uh, you know, I I did audition and uh, apparently that was received well. And then I did have a meeting with Mark as well. And like uh, Luke said that, you know, he can be challenging to read. And and those me- those meetings in general, uh, I think, and I, I wonder if yeah, you guys recognize this. You know, it's it, they're so hard because you know you you also try and and <clears throat> present yourself right. You're trying like like so you you try and say one or two smart things about how you see the character right, and maybe something that uh, somebody else hasn't said yet because. You know, the the showrunner might have taken already many other meetings. And so it's uh, it's challenging, but I like it definitely better than 
taping something at home, I mean, it's, uh, you know, because there's, there's just no connection then, you know, and there's so little to, to feed off of. I am curious when you're, um, you know, in the process of booking a role or going out for a role, how much time and energy do you expend into sort of that initial process, you know, as opposed to once you get the role, obviously, you can really throw yourself into it. And I know people have different thoughts about, you know, uh, wanting to go into meetings like this kind of more open or did you actually start your preparation even before that? Yeah, I would say, I mean, I have uh my history is sort of not getting jobs <laughs> and you do have to reconcile yourself as an actor to that very fact that you put the work in and it doesn't necessarily pan out. And the way that I reconcile that to myself is that each audition is the job, right? That is the performance. It, it could be more, it could be less, but our, this is it. You, you, ha you, you have it. So that's the only way that it make that it doesn't become like a soul crushing endeavor, quite frankly, for me. So I do put as much work as I possibly can into each audition. Um, sometimes you don't get a lot. You have to fill in the gaps. They're not handing out scripts. You know, things are very secretive at times. You just have a breakdown, let's say. Well, like there is work you can do. You can imagine a backstory, you can whatever. So yeah, each audition for me, because sometimes that's all I have going on in the, in like a six month span. Those are my little, little mini opportunities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think what I, I remember when I, I spoke to Mark, I'd been fortunate enough to, to read a couple of the episodes and I felt that, um, I thought, okay, well, I, I think I get the character. I think I understand him. I think I know enough about him to present some kind of version of him on the call. <laughs> and I, mm. and, and cause I, cause I wasn't gonna, I wasn't, I didn't do a read for him or anything. I, but I did feel that even on a camera or sitting in my hotel room, you know, after a day shoot on another movie, I thought I need to show him something, whether he sees it or not is, is not my, I can't do anything about that, but I wanted to somehow give him a glimmer of something where he might go, ah, oh, I just saw a bit of Bambi there or something, mm -hmm. you know? And that's what I, that's what I think when I'm, whenever I meet someone for a job or, 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 or audition in the past, when I had to, you know, think up, I'd think about the physicality, what I would wear, how I would speak, the speed at which I spoke, the, the, the way I'd moved and all of that stuff, try to create very quickly, you know, roughly, loosely, an idea of what the character may be like. It may not end up being anything like it when you get the job, if, you, if you're lucky enough to get the job, you know, but sometimes to present something to them because, you know, you, they, they see lots and lots of people. I know lots of people were seen for my role. Um, and so you sort of try and do something and hope that it's different. It's the eye-catching thing that, you know, gets you, that lands you the, the gig. Mikhail? I, <laughs> I, I, no, I, I completely agree with, with Luke and I recognize a lot of that. Um, but I, I do also, you know, try and sort of balance the amount of prep I put into an audition or a meeting with the likeliness of landing the role. If I feel that there's a chance and if I really like it, I'm willing to spend a lot of time on it. And if I think that I'm not, not really sure if this is for me, then I want to protect myself because, you know, when you really dive in, you dive in. And then I'm so disappointed if it's not for me, you know? Yeah. Um, I'm so curious, uh, uh, speaking of diving in and like committing yourself to something, how did you prepare yourselves, not just physically, but mentally for these roles? Because these characters are very specific and part of very specific worlds. And I have to imagine it was important. You wanted to get it right. And I, I know that, you know, Mark is a research fiend. And so um, I imagine he had probably people to help you or consultants, but where did you even begin? I think all of us have a very different journey uh, to mm -hmm. where we got to. I mean, um, I, for, from myself and Mikhail, I know we, I can speak for us when we, when we had uh, professional military personnel with us prior to shooting. Um, we, we trained every day. We, we were, we were, 
we were drilled every day with how to mm. handle a weapon, how to how to move, how to, you know, or in different environments, how you would cope with that, how you would speak. There was, so there was a lot of a lot of work gone into that. And then obviously you, that's part of just who we were as as Delta Force soldiers. And then, you know, I was my character has a terrible addiction problem. He's a terrible alcoholic, which he tries to stay clean and then falls back off the the wagon as it were um so that played a huge part in several of the episodes for me you know where i i really was a, i felt completely you know a bit of a mess it sounds like the two of you were like almost in a boot camp together totally oh. we we were we were and it's 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 really i i i cherish those memories um <laughs> Uh, one of my favorite memories of, of boot camp is uh, when our uh, military advisor decided to take us together with Mark and a couple of other um, people on the show uh, on a night hike on the Appalachian Trail as part of like a bonding experience. And uh, I remember like, you know, we set up camp in the middle of the night. It was like probably two in the morning. I had found a spot that I thought was good. So I put out my my little bed and I put my my sleeping bag on it. Turns out that that it was slight. I was slightly on an incline, uh, which I thought was not going to be a problem because my head was a little higher than my feet. I thought that's fine. I like that the way that feels. Turns out you can't do that because then you'll always wake up an hour later at the bottom. So I woke up every hour. <laughs> anyway, we slept. We slept a couple of hours and then in the morning, I had this little gas stove, but Luke had the oatmeal. So we had to work together to make breakfast. Wow. Right. Teamwork. That's right. I love it. <laughs> Jessica, what were you when they were off camping together? <laughs> um, well, for me, you know, going into the role, which was the most exciting part of the role, was that the character sort of goes through a full spectrum of what could be expected in the life of a human being. And um, I hadn't experienced that on screen. I had certainly had that experience on stage. So what I really focused myself on was getting really inflamed about my bond with these two men and the backstory and how I could really just double down in my backstory heart feeling for these two other characters in the best possible way. So that way, as I move through any of the stakes, they are expressed from that place. Like I wouldn't be lost, you know, everything could hinge on, on really getting super in touch with that. So as long as I felt really short up on that, I felt like I could kind of feel my way and um, make, make appropriate choices. Like with all of the insane stuff she goes through like you know drug psychosis staring at death escape survival espionage it all just relates back to her bond with these two men and then that was that's really what i did what i worked on do you all work on that together in a way because the relationships in the series feel so authentic you really feel like siblings or a married couple or even you know with prince and bambi where you almost seem to communicate telepathically um how does that develop do you get to spend time together get to know each other at all or do you just have to show up on set and like be like you've known each other your whole lives go what really uh, helped think... me is like sorry i felt like i loved you both very like immediately i was mm. like oh well they're fabulous they're wonderful people <laughs> this is going to be very easy <laughs> Yeah. And, and, you know, like we were, I think we were all very aware that we had basically one episode where we were all together and it was this one episode, which is the first episode where you have to see the bond between the brother and the sister, the bond between the sister and her fiance and the bond between the two soldiers. And we had that one episode to instill that in the viewer, in the audience, and for them to not just see it, but believe that these two men would go through all that they do. And she would go alone for all of that time in the hope that her brother and her husband will, would turn up. You know, And we had to make sure that that was as solid and as real and as visceral to and believable as possible. Because once, you know, once Amber 
was taken in the jungle, we don't see it till episode late, late episode eight, nine was, you know, it, it was, I was very aware of that. And so I really, these two people, are, they're like family to me now. And, um, I mean, I've never had a sister, so I, it was always it was very fun. I'm an only child, so <laughs> to have a have a little sister to pretend I had for, was uh, was an absolute joy. Yeah, I, I totally agree with uh, with them, and I also think that there's also a side of that prep that is private. So we need to make sure that we're all on the same page in terms of our his our past, our shared histories, our character shared histories, and then we need to also. We also have our secrets, you know, like these characters have towards each other. Were there certain secrets you told yourself that that they don't know? Yeah, there's things that I imagined that my character had experienced in life that I that Prince would never have told um, these two. Did you share them with Mark by any chance? Or was no. it just for you? Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. I'm actually curious because um, even though you have these great scripts, I'm sure uh, I hear that Mark is very collaborative with his actors, and he, you know, really wants the characters to feel real and authentic to them. Can you talk a little bit about working with Mark? Well, I think he really keeps us on on, on our toes because I think that what he really likes is to be in the moment as much as possible. Won't you guys agree? Sure. Yeah. yeah. I think that um, he, you know, you can be kind of trucking through something and then given the day, the location, what's coming from the actor, he might be inspired in real time. And completely rewrite it. That right. Or, has happened. or, you know, say, <laughs> wow, oh my goodness, this, I, I'm yeah. seeing something I didn't see before. And, um, Sometimes, of course, that's super challenging just on a technical front, because while we all want a beautiful product, you're still talking about getting thrown a couple of new pages and, and having to deliver those in the same day. So it's an experience. But at the same time, you felt like you were with you were working with someone who was not interested in seeing a failed product. Right. And that sort of was going to help you figure that out. And sometimes we're easier than other times. And it didn't happen all the time. But and even and if you felt like, no, you couldn't do it, there was a voice there or whatever. So but yeah, you know, it's it's an interesting um, it's an interesting dance when that when when that can happen, because your creator and your is there, you know, every day sort of that was and that's quite unusual isn't it i mean i i, I yeah. i've done tv shows before but you, you don't really you don't see the showrunner on a daily basis a weekly basis or sometimes even monthly basis on a long run because you know they're busy they're busy writing but monk would be would be with us or every day and so you know that was a real um that was a real asset, I think, to all of us, which we totally utilized on a regular basis just to be able to say, hey, listen, you know, how I've thought about this scene. Can we, can I, can I try this? I'm not sure he would say this. And he'd go, tell me why. And then you start a conversation about it, you know, and, and, and you'd work it through. And um, that's a real, that's a real talent of Mark's to be able to, to, you know, as you know, we know he's won Oscars doing what he does and, but he's still open and ready to, to receive our opinions and, and, and work with us because at the end of the day, it's us. We are the, we are those people, you know, and, and he wants us to, to what comes out of our mouths in those characters uh, has to feel right. And, and so um, that was a great thing. I really enjoyed that process for sure. You've all worked with like so many interesting creators and directors. I'm curious as actors, what do you hope for from a director when you come to set? What, what are some of the things that, you know, you prefer to be spoken to as an actor? Okay. I love the list is very long. <laughs> yes, yes. But if we need to pick something, I like working with filmmakers that have a very strong idea of what something needs to be, but are not set or like are, are still open to what the day brings or the moment brings, you know? Mm. Yeah, I would say for me, you, you work for people that 
have a space in their process for other people's process and um and and it feels safe right to go through your process because we all have different processes as, as artists mm -hmm. um so that would be like the biggest feature for me if i'm working in a place where yeah 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 just it just has to be faster well okay you're not really respecting the fact that i'm that i might actually be an artist and they might actually have like a, a process that, that's what i would throw out there yeah and i think what, another thing i've 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 enjoyed working with filmmakers who actually um have uh a, um an ability to almost edit as they go along in their mm. heads so they know mm. how things are going to be put together because mm -hmm. let me tell you a director that doesn't is sometimes it's it's the case and it is what it is the process is a little slower well a mm -hmm. lot slower and sometimes there's a lots of going back and forth because they they haven't maybe storyboarded it as well as they should they haven't maybe thought about how things will cut together now you know once you've done i don't know how many movies it takes as an actor but i know as i'm going along i'm thinking how are they going to put how are they going to cut this how is this going to cut like the you know many different things the lighting the sound <laughs> how, you know that and oh i'm constantly God. i'm like i am an, i'm obsessive when it comes to continuity and I, I, it just pulls me out of a story if I see something that just doesn't shouldn't be there or or you know and so I'm often thinking like that and so if there's a director that thinks like that too for me it calms me a little and I can stop worrying about that shit because <laughs> otherwise I'm constantly in the back of my mind going this isn't going to work that's we're looking left to right there right to, you know all that all that stuff all the time you know and it's it's something that I've learned and observed the some really great directors who do it and it's um it allows me as an actor just to sort of breathe and just do my job instead of thinking worrying oh god we're going to be coming back here in a week's time because we've <laughs> missed uh, you know that that, that shit happens and, and i understand you know that sometimes that happens but for me that's that's a really that's a great thing but sometimes you don't know about that you don't know that until you're actually on set with the director and then you find out <laughs> Oh, Luke, this is so funny that you say this. I, re I remember maybe a moment in those eight or nine months of shooting where we would look at each other and thinking, is this going to make it in the cut? <laughs> Do you remember? Uh, the hallway. The hallway. The hallway. <laughs> Did it make it? Did it make it? Yeah. Well, if it did, like, a, a, yeah, a split second. <laughs> Never too many takes. That's the one... That's the one I hate. Oh my God. Takes yeah. too many takes. I'm like, I feel like a robot. <laughs> yeah. But some some directors love it, you know. Yeah. Peter Jackson, the kid, the master of like the king of takes. Uh take hey. after take after take after take. Yeah. Tens, 30, 40 takes. Yeah. Whoa. Wow. I didn't yeah. know. How do you keep yourself fresh for each take? Mm -hmm. Lots of coffee. <laughs> wear wear yourself down into genius, I guess is the concept. When you start, you start literally like being really like, so this time I won't blink on that word. This time I'll breathe out on this word. I'm like, what is it? What does he want? What is it he wants? You know, but you know, he, he obviously wants something or he's he's thinking the bigger picture and how he cuts it, you know, but sometimes you just, you know, it's, it's also good, I think, as an actor to be, able to be able to adapt. And, and you know, it might not be the perfect way you like to, to work, but to adapt as an actor, I think, is one of the biggest weapons or tools we have in our box, you know, to 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 move, jump different directors as we had to during the show that that's also difficult because you get mm -hmm. all set a lovely crew we've done like two episodes together everybody's working there's a nice synergy there's a nice you know and then all of a sudden it's adios bienvenido you're somebody new and you're like brand new crew brand new director you have to work out their personalities and and so you know it's uh it's not just about coming to set and doing your lines you know you you, you start a, a new group a new crew you know every time and that's also an interesting challenge that I hadn't thought about when I did my first TV show. I was like, it's all good. I'm like, What's happening? What, where, what? We're getting a new director, a new crew, a new first AD, a new everything. It was like, wow, you know, that's a big challenge, which I now know we, is, is how it works. We worked, um, um, amongst others, with a Peruvian and Argentinian director on Echo 3, which is why Luke went to, like, Spanish for a second. <laughs> I flew him. I'm just explaining what happened <laughs> and fluently. Hold on. But you remind me of a teacher. We had a teacher at Juilliard that used to say, like, he used to go, like, champions adjust. 
<laughs> like any time there was like a complaint. That's a good one. Yeah, That's a good one. Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny how, how little remarks like that can stay with you for a long time. Yeah. I, one of my favorite ones that I don't know if I mentioned this to you guys, maybe I did at some point in the shoot. Uh, I worked with Mike Newell, the, the yeah. British director once on uh, the Guernsey literary blah, blah, blah movie. And he would say literally before every take, he would he would say, and remember, Mikhail, never before. As in, like, this is the first time you're entering this room or you mm. you have never seen this. You don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> and I would say that and take five, six, ten, whatever. And, and I loved it. It just kind of gave, gave me the feeling like I was still allowed to explore. Well, that's yeah. so great. I worked for him too. And um, did? he never said that to me. And now I'm, <laughs> I'm like, I could have really needed, I needed that. Oh shit. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. It was I'm just sorry. for you. Apparently it's just, yeah, for you. I guess I needed it. Nugget. You got the, nugget. No, I probably needed it <laughs> because this was such a long and grueling shoot. I mean, you're putting yourself through so much emotionally and physically. How do you sort of pace yourself uh, uh, or take care of yourself? from day to day? <laughs> well, Friday nights, we might have hit town a few times, right? Bogota. <laughs> downtown <laughs> you know, Bogota. Yeah, downtown yeah. Bogota. No, but it's we obviously every... one of the challenges on a shoot like this, where the, the, the story and the characters are so intense. Like, how do you how do, you do that for eight, nine, 10 months we worked in, in total, right? Yeah. That's a challenge. And you're moving around, you know, you, you, you're changing house every few, few yeah. weeks or a month or so, you know, packing up and then discovering a new location. I mean, you, you, the traveling life is, is, is definitely a part of this job more than I ever thought it would be. You become quite good at it. I mean, I, I'm quite good at making a home very quickly, lighting a candle, putting out my clothes and, um, you know, going for a shop to the local supermarket and finding out what, what, delicious things they've got in the <coughs> downtown Bogotas, you know, <laughs> um, you know, and, 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 you know, I, I just, I also feel like I sleep really well. I sleep like, like a baby all the time. So th I think it's the best thing. I'm, I'm very lucky that I can, I can do that because sometimes, you know, you're in a bed, does it's not all the time you're in a bed, it's not your own and noises and temperatures and sounds and all those things that you just take for granted when you're in your own bed at home. But, you know, when you're on a on a job like this, you know, it's something I, I'm very lucky and I hope it, I never lose it because it. if I don't sleep, you don't want to be around me. I'm a miserable, miserable person. I'm the same way. I think I think like sleep and the ability to take a nap like anywhere. <laughs> I think there's pictures of us in that crowded marketplace, like which was like the yeah. stench was unbelievable. There was just like. It's so crazy. And we're all just like fast asleep, you know, like in a corner somewhere on a chair. Yeah, yeah. In those chairs. Yeah. 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 Especially, especially uh, what I always try to do is because we had quite a bit of night shoots on this one. I always try and catch uh, some sleep during lunch. That's, mm. that's, oh, yeah. 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 Force myself, like, eat as quickly as I can, <laughs> like five minutes, lights out, too. close your eyes. Yeah, I'm exactly not a person right. who can just sleep like that. I'm I'm jealous of you all. This is a very special skill. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, but but you but you have to. <laughs> I also um I just recently learned that this was the largest production to ever shoot in Colombia. Um, what was it like to work with a well, sorry with a crew there? It was wonderful. I mean, we they they were they were they were a joy. I know we've all kept in touch with members of the crew um, from makeup, costume, lighting, you yeah. know, wardrobe. They, they were a very lovely, lovely bunch, very professional. Um, they were in it as thick up to, up to the neck as we were. And wherever we were, they were. And they, we worked in some hellish conditions, like monsoon rain mud like rivers of slurry around our trailers and where wherever we're working and you never heard any complaints um just people just going on with it and that was something i will remember fondly about the the smiling nature 
of the Colombians. You know, they really are a very pleasant race. And um, um, yeah, it was, we all felt that we got there together at the end. That's how I felt when I gave everyone a hug on that final day in Cartagena. It was like, wow, we did it, guys. We mm -hmm. did it. They were lovely. Um, so my, my, my experience of it was, was very positive. Well, again, it's such a fantastic series, and I want to remind everyone watching at home that all episodes are now available to stream on Apple TV+. And on behalf of the SAG After Foundation, I want to thank you all so much for sharing your experiences, process, and craft with your fellow performers. Thank you so much for being here. Janelle, thank you. Take care.